The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of Oshkosh Media, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Right beside me tonight, this afternoon, I have Beth Nemechek. Thanks for joining me, Beth. Thank you very much for having me. From Bella Medical. But but instead of, ta instead of talking about Bella right away, we're going to talk about kidney transplant because kidney transplants are very important, and it's very important to be an organ donor. Absolutely, and kidney donation and kidney recipients is all about life, and that's what Bella Medical Clinic is all about. So when did you find out? When did you find out that you were going to need a new kidney, and what kind of shock was it to you? Well, it was about 2008, and we'd been on vacation, and I got very ill on the vacation. And on the, on the cruise ship, they suggested I see my doctor when I returned home. And after some tests, it was determined that I had only about 50% kidney function, and that was in 2008. And annually, then, in fact, every couple of months, they had me monitored for kidney function. And by 20, 2009, my kidney function was down to about 30%. And I just was flabbergasted. I couldn't believe that this was really happening to me. I had changed my diet substantially, um, limiting some of the things that are detrimental to kidney function. For instance, dark sodas, um, uh, a lot of things with phosphorus, which is difficult when you live in the land of cheese, and cheese has a lot of phosphorus. <coughs> Excuse me. In about 2014, 2015, my kidney function had gotten worse. In fact, um, there was a short period of time that I had gone on hemodialysis at that point, but my kidneys kicked back in, which was truly a blessing, and I was able to have that removed. Then um, in June, um, or the middle of May 2018, um, my kidneys completely failed. I was down to three to five percent and I had to go on dialysis and there was not any choice. Um, I did get them to prolong it because Bella had our annual fundraising banquet and so we pushed it four days so I could make it to the banquet and um, the next day they put in the hemodialysis and the dialysis was wonderful. It You felt really good but not right after it. Um, I had the dialysis done um, at a clinic here in Oshkosh at Aurora, it's called the Vita, and I would go in there feeling great, and after four hours of hemodialysis, I, would, I couldn't even drive home. I was just drained. And so in the middle of July last year, um, they introduced me to something that's called PD dialysis, peritoneal dialysis, in which I was able to do it at home while I slept. And my husband became Nurse Wayne and got really good at being my manager of all of my products and those kind of things. But even with the dialysis, um, by the middle of September, it, it just was not cleaning my um, kidney function enough that they were going to make me go back on hemo. Back in 2008, when I first was determined to have kidney failure, um, it was already being discussed. You need to start concentrating on potentially needing a kidney. In 2014, it became even that much more apparent. We knew none of my family members were a match, um, and my husband has um, high blood pressure, so he wasn't going to be a match at all. And so we started looking to friends and family. And um, many people said, oh, I'd donate if I was a match. And... Um, that that just wasn't an option because they weren't. Now let's backtrack a little bit. Um, back on the cruise ship, when you got sick, did you have any symptoms before or any or, or any warning signs to let you know this was happening? No, it was really bizarre. In fact, I um, I had been out on an excursion. We were supposed to swim with dolphins, Ooh, that's, and that sounds fun. yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't get to do it. Because um, we were taking the ship or the little paddle thing across to where the excursion was going to happen. 
And I couldn't even like hold my head up. I just kept being sick, throwing up and all those kind of things. And my husband and my daughter were kind of thinking I was just chickening out of this, but it got to the point where I couldn't walk or anything. And so they took me back to the, my ship and um, the Disney ship. I'm a big Disney so fan. So you felt really weak, huh? Oh, I was very weak. And they said I was dehydrated. So they gave me a lot of fluids and it, I, I felt a lot better. But then I started swelling and all this kind of thing. And so that by the time I got home, I went to my general practitioner and she ran general blood tests. And it was within two days that I saw a kidney doctor, a nephrologist. Did you go through shock or denial, which most people do, you know? At that point, I just really didn't, uh, you know, it's kind of like, finding out maybe you're pre-diabetic, yeah. you know, like, okay, so I have to like watch what I'm eating or whatever. So it was kind of like, okay, you have like, you know, come on, if I've got 50% kidney function, I still got 50%. Yeah. I've gotten to be this old, you know. Well, you know, some people take it harder than others. So. I know, and it down the road it did. I mean, um, the reality hit home, especially that time when they said that it had dropped to 35 it became real apparent because my daughter was just entering college and all of a sudden it was like, whoa, I'm just going to like miss this whole part of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, did, it, did, it, did it give you a, a, a reality check? Um, my husband and I really had a reality check along the way, especially when it came to priorities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for so many years, we chased that big magical dream and collected stuff and mm -hmm. stuff was important and all of that. And all of a sudden it was like, whoa, throw the brakes on. It's time to take a look around and see what's really important. It's time to take care of yourself. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And how did it affect, you know, it affects the patient when they have, when they have a problem, but how did it impact your husband? Um, him, he is so stoic that it's very difficult to tell, but it really... Um, my daughter was really traumatized by it, especially the fact that she wasn't a match as a donor. Because she wanted to help in the worst way, right? She did. And then, of course, there your, you have your mother instincts kick in and the fact that I didn't want to put her in jeopardy if this was something um, um, that she could potentially inherit. And, you know, so they have all of that dilemma, that kind of thing. I'm looking at the facts here. It says one in, it says one in three... One in three adults are at risk for kidney disease. Absolutely. That doesn't surprise me because some of the biggest factors that cause kidney disease are diabetes, obesity, um, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, heart problems, smoking, all of the kinds of things that are vices that it's not uncommon for people to have one or multiple. And this touches me personally because my... My dad is going through dialysis right now, the, the perineal, and... He does it at home. Yeah, he does it at home, and he's looking, maybe looking forward to, you know, being on the, being on the transplant list, or he's he's 75, so it's, he doesn't know what to really do, but he when he wants to get off dialysis, so what, what would be the number one thing you could say to people, to, um, um, to people to maybe educate them, or, or to... Uh, I'm trying to find the right words here to to, to get their di to uh, to get a transplant to get a transplant or even to you know to to live a, a better quality of life maybe to eat healthier. Well, obviously that's a factor. The biggest thing is just like everybody talks about the fact that do things in moderation. You know, like don't overdo anything. You know, and we talk about that a lot. But most importantly, probably the thing is is keep your blood pressure in check. Make, you know, keep testing, you know, you go for your annual physicals, they'll let you know what your blood sugars are. Those are some of the biggest causes. Also, when you have blood tests done, there's a couple of tests that they do just generally in your normal standard blood tests that are primarily kidney indicators. One is called your creatinine, and normal healthy kidney people with normal healthy kidneys is somewhere between 0.8 and 1.2. Mine, at the time of transplant, was 12-something. And, and just to let people know, your, uh, my dad's creatinine level, when he was in the hospital, because he, he went in there for knee replacements and he got an infection, and, and then they, because I, I think that his antibiotics killed, the, killed some of the kidneys, because he was on a lot of antibiotics, and um, 
his creatinine level was eight, yeah. and, and now it's at four. But that's and, managed with the. And now it's at four. Now it's managed with the dialysis, but but they still say it should be around one. So and he only has fifteen percent of his kidneys. Wow, so, that's he's doing really really well though because so, then he's obviously managing those other things in his life too. Yep. But the neat part about my story in particular is um, I had been reaching out to friends and family and um, last June when I had the dialysis, the hemodialysis port inserted, I belong to an organization here in Oshkosh called Tempo. It's an organization of women who are the top person in their business. And um, Diane Penzenstadler, a good friend of mine, mentioned to the people at the organization that um, I was not there because I was having this done. And a woman whom I'd only heard her name, I'd never met, um, was already being tested to be a kidney donor. And another month or so went by and she reached out to me to find out about my story, thinking maybe that she could be a donor for me. And when it didn't happen that she was a donor for me, she opted to donate through what's called the Pair Donation Network. And what makes this really unique is she was willing enough, Stephanie was willing enough to donate a kidney for me, that she gave it for me to someone else. And in this paired donor relation, that person who received Stephanie's kidney had to have someone who would then donate their kidney to someone else, and that person had to have a kidney, had a friend or a family member that was going to donate. So the chain goes on like dominoes. Stephanie donated her kidney the Friday after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I received the call the next Thursday with a scheduled date of December 19th. Um, and, and do you have a personal relationship with her now? I do now. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. She's a wonderful person, and mm -hmm. she's right here in Oshkosh. And how has that made you... How has that made your health feel, and how has it vitalized your life again? Multi, multi-facets. One, I feel, um, I feel a certain responsibility, not only to my family and my friends for all they've done to support me through this, but to her, you know. And so it's, like, real important to me that I make a point to manage my fluid intake. It's very important how much water I drink every day. Because remember, for years, I retained fluid horrendously because... Um, I didn't have a working kidney. Yeah. So now it's difficult for me to judge how much fluid I should drink for a working kidney. And so now I have to, I drink based on um, ounces, not necessarily based on thirst. So, so in a final message, what would you say to people who are maybe scared about donating or want to donate, and, but they're kind of fearful? Everybody's different. But the first and foremost thing is you will not need your organs in heaven. So consider being a donor after you leave this earth. Yeah. Um, it's real simple. All you do is when you register. However, um, if you're interested in learning more about being a donor, I know Stephanie would be happy to share that with you either, and I can direct you to her too. However, um, she donated, as I said, the Friday after Thanksgiving, and she was back to work full time in two weeks. And what would you say to those people like my dad that are, that are scared to maybe, you know? I had my kidney donation at 11 o'clock on um, the 19th of December. I was home on the 23rd, just in time to celebrate Jesus' birthday and have Santa come down the chimney. And I had a whole family over for Christmas Day. Now I recognize um, everybody's different, but I do believe there's a certain amount of psychological factors. Mm -hmm. And I, um, 24 hours after my surgery, they had me up and I walked two miles that day. And Amen to that. Yeah, absolutely. Amen to and, the whole thing. And to switch it over now to, to, to more medical stuff, we're going to talk about Bella. Wonderful. Um, that's my passion. And how long has Bella been in existence? Well, that's real interesting. Um, and it's really interesting in how the two things work together. But um, Bella Medical Clinic, our, our, our formal name, our corporate name, is Labor of Love. And many of your viewers might know it as that name. It started as a maternity home. Back in 19 I think you, I think I I think you're the, you're you're your best kept secret or something because you know not too many hospitals 
know about what you guys offer. We try. We've we've shared our messages with them, and unfortunately, because unfortunately, it started out as Labor of Love Incorporated as a maternity home in 1993. In 2010, they decided they wanted to have a more medical perspective, because many of the people that were coming to the maternity home for assistance weren't coming for housing. They were coming for pregnancy testing, they were coming for diapers, they were coming for education, those kind of things. So it was at that point that they fortunately were blessed with a buyer to buy the home. So that, and that home was right here on Church Street. So, so, so they, just by having that home, they found the need because people were coming. You know? Absolutely, so they sold the home, but they didn't have a new home. So for about six, seven months, labor of love didn't exist. And then when they restarted, which was wonderful because they started with a whole new presence. They started with a new, same mission to save lives. But most importantly, um, they had much more to offer. Mm -hmm. However, they changed their name and there was not any transition. And you in marketing know that one of the most important things is, well, come on, McDonald's, any five-year-old can identify it from five miles away. You don't, you don't change the name, you don't change the colors. So we did have a little um, blip, if you will, as we reestablished ourselves under the new name, Bella Medical Clinic, and that came about in 2010. And how did you get hooked up with Bella? How did you find oh, out about that's, Bella? Bella is my encore. I've had two other careers in my life. I was a school teacher okay. and I taught middle school science and then I owned a printing company. Did you did you like teaching science? I did. I loved it. How many years did you teach? I taught science? 12. Okay. And then I owned a printing company for 22 years and I thought I was done working. And um just so happened. But Bella's your newfound passion. No, right? Bella's my encore. You encore. know, the encore is always the best, right? Okay, yeah. and save, so, save the best for last. Absolutely. Um, I started in August of 2012, and um, I had no idea what I was doing. I'd served on many nonprofit boards throughout the Fox Valley. I'm originally from Nina, and a lot to do with nonprofits in the Appleton, Nina Menashe area. Not so much in Oshkosh previously. A little bit with the chamber, but that's about it. Are you surprised by the growth of Bella? I mean, the oh uh, yeah, the, the need. Oh, um, the need has always been there. I think the biggest thing that we are benefiting from now is not only social media, like us on Facebook, look us up on the web, um, but our clients and our patients telling others. And I think that's... Yeah, and my number one, one reason for doing this show is to, to educate and to get the message out to hospitals because hospitals should be sharing... Absolutely, because the, the services that we offer, first of all, are um, open to anyone. You don't have to live in Winnebago County. You don't have to live in Outagamie County. You don't have to even live in a house. And what's great is you, you guys don't judge anybody that walks in the Ab door. It, it walks in, rolls in, crawls in, however. <laughs> we had a guy that used to come on a skateboard. We don't care. Okay. We're all about helping people make the best choices for them. We don't choose for anybody. We don't anything. All we do is present all the choices that they have all the things that they have to help them be better parents, better equipped, better healthy. Because you, all those kind you of want them to be the best of themselves when they leave. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and what's neat is our program is kind of two-sided. We have a medical side and then we have a parenting side. Our medical side is run by our nurse manager, okay. Deanna Schmidt. And on Deanna's side, she does pregnancy testing, um, and, and if you are, if you do have a positive medical grade pregnancy test, not only can she confirm that pregnancy to help you get assistance through Badger Care and WIC and those kind of things, but then she can offer you an ultrasound so that you can have that first opportunity to see your baby. Yeah. Then she can offer you prenatal vitamins, set you up with referrals, also provide you some of the basics in prenatal care. All the same time, she would do an STD test. If we found out that you had any sexually transmitted diseases, we treat them. And again, all of our services are at no charge, and Bella receives no state or federal funding. 
all of our funding for all of our programs is through private donors and grants that we apply for. Okay. So, and, and she handles all those things along with well women exams, including PAP tests. Okay. Do you want to talk about some of the wonderful classes you guys offer? Oh, absolutely. Well, every Wednesday we hold a class called Baby and Me, and that's one of our group classes. And what's really fun about that is it typically has a topic. Last week they made baby food. It was kind of cool. Everybody got to leave with a baby food masher. And then the week before they... Um, I can't, they did something for the 4th of July, and they've done baby massage. So every Wednesday there's a class. Then, oh, I know, dental hygiene for infants they did just recently. Um, but then the other classes that we have are individualized. And what's unique about them is everybody who comes to Bella has a different background. You know, I always joke about the fact that I was 35 years old when I was first going to be a mom. Mm -hmm. I had very little experience babysitting, even holding a baby. So I was that kind of person that needed to come to Bella to learn like, like, how do you hold this? How do you like, and then we've got some people who come and they had 10 brothers and sisters and they know all that, but they need help in getting an apartment, maybe getting a GED or how to do any of those kind of things, how to make a budget. But every one of our parents gets some of the same classes. Safety sleeping, how to put a car seat in. Um, what, ha what happens if you have somebody come in that's been in a domestic violent relationship and, you know, th that can be, be very scary, so they don't want to share a whole lot. Maybe they're quiet at first. And well, we work, we, first of all, we work hard to build up that trust. Yeah. However, we've also had situations in which we, Whenever we have someone come into the clinic, if they come in with someone else, just like at the doctor's office, it's up to that. Per we don't. We only want the woman typically to come back by themselves to start with. Okay. It's extremely helpful in us for identifying exactly what you're saying, abuse, sex trafficking, all of those kind of things. And we have just recently installed some security features at Bella, not cameras or any of those, because, again, we want to maintain people's confidentiality. So, so basically my, my message is to, to the Oshkosh community, don't be afraid. Even, even if you've been in a domestic abuse relationship and you're pregnant, you can still come there? And... Absolutely. We work, with, we work very closely as, or, and as much as we can with Christy Dan Center, Domestic Road, Damascus Road, excuse me, Father Cars, the Salvation Army, all of those so that we're not duplicating services uh -huh. so that we're able to but again, our parenting program that you were mentioning, those classes, yeah. the neat part about it is it's incentive-based. People can earn things that they need for their baby, okay. from simple things like diapers to car seats, and they're all brand new because people work hard for them. Do you want to talk a little bit about the, they, they get like bucks, do you want to talk about? Yeah. Know, is it, it, the, it's a bonus. It is. Well, it's it's not a bonus. I it's mean. An, it's kind of it, like a paycheck. Yeah. Because yeah, becoming a parent is hard work. It's very stressful, especially Abs especially when you know, when you're low income like me and don't have a lot of money. Well, or the fact that if this is your first time parenting, or if you have, you know, how am I going to provide for this? So now we, what we're trying to do is not give a hand out, but a step up, because what we're doing is you're coming to classes and you're earning mommy money or daddy bucks to purchase the things that you need. And if you were to say, oh, I really want a stroller, and we don't carry that kind of stroller in our boutique, you save your money and we'll purchase it for you. We have wonderful donors who will make those things happen as long as you're willing to work for As it. long as we have time here, do you want to give a shout out to some of those donors? Oh, some of our donors, most of them are anonymous, but we have some generous, generous people that support just, Bella Medical Just give Clinic. a shout out to the community. Oh, well. Uh, a general shout out. For instance, absolutely, the city of Oshkosh is just amazing, especially as we have our Walk for Life yeah. coming up the first Saturday in October. Just talked with Catherine Snell at the off, um, city hall here, um, getting that all set up. They're so happy to do it with us. Um, there's a variety and, of and other speak, organizations. And speaking of the closet, I think we have a video here. Oh, wow. That's, a video that'd be great. here of the closet just to show what you it's our. It, we call it a boutique. The boutique. It looks like it's in the a boutique, closet. Yeah. And this is just a sample of some of the kinds of products that we have available. Obviously, the bigger products that we have, we 
keep in a storage room just because, well, if we put two car seats in there, it would kind of take up our space. Yeah, so... And, and I encourage anyone who's never been to Bella Medical Clinic and is interested in learning more about we do, what we do, we would be happy to have you call. Come on over. We'll, we're happy to give tours, show off. We're doing some remodeling a little bit right now. Rearranging rooms is my kind of remodeling. Do you guys cover any of the mental health side? Because that's a, that's a side too. That you know? is a huge side, along with drug abuse and working with moms going through methadone clinics and those kind of things. Um, the, the whole um, situation dealing with that is do, extremely do important. Do you ever have moms that come in and that are on methadone? And we have, currently, we have a couple right now. And um, we have been through uh, preg full pregnancies with people. In fact, our wonderful community foundation a couple of years ago, Women's Fund, stepped forward and presented a woman who had successfully um, raised her child, had come through the pregnancy, had been working through it, completely changed her life around, and they presented her at Christmas with a beautiful crib and things to get her started. Uh -huh. So again, you know, it's, it's people recognizing the efforts this takes. Mm -hmm. Um, how often do you, how often do you get single moms to go come in there all the time, huh? Um, you know, single moms is kind of a is a unique phrase because there's always a dad involved somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. And we encourage them to work really hard at trying to get the father to be involved yeah. with that child. But if they don't want to, of course, nobody's made to do anything. It's all your choice. But again, um, that father will always be that baby's father. And sometimes if we can help them build a relationship that way, along with the fact that if the father participates, there's that much more education. And when they first come when they first come in when they first come in they're like they're like, boy, am I gonna be judged or Oh, uh, we have oftentimes people say after a couple of months, you know, I can't believe you just never asked for anything. And we don't. Because we're not billing an insurance company, we we don't have to have any credit. You could be a millionaire, or you could be living at a homeless shelter. Do they leave there with more of education? You think? I hope to. I hope so. Okay. Um, you know, what's really interesting is just recently, funny that you say that, is one of our moms mentioned at um, one of our baby and me classes that somebody had was saying something and she's like no I learned at Bella that this is the way you do it and it was kind of interesting just to hear her sharing with other moms about a technique that she had learned within our point. remaining minutes here do you want to share a quick story oh let me think yes a couple of years ago we had a wonderful woman who was a graduate student at UW Oshkosh okay. um, she did not plan to be pregnant she was in her master's program and she became pregnant. Um, every, every week, she trudged pregnant through the snow to the clinic to get education. Okay. When her baby was born, she carried that child week after week after week. She has now graduated with her master's. He's about almost three, I think. She has a wonderful job in Appleton and she still communicates with Sue on how good it's going. So. Yes, we have, you know, we, there's some challenge stories too, but it's always, everybody it ends up in a better place than where they began. And even if you're disabled and you, you're rolling there in a wheelchair, they're not going to, they're not going to judge you. And no, you come visit us and you'll see that we are handicap accessible and you can roll around. And uh, if, if you're a single mom and scared and there's no fear in it, just... And they'll help you through the mental health side too. They'll help you get on the right track. They're very, they're very supportive. And when, if you're, if even if you're a single dad, and you, want, maybe, you can come all maybe, by yourself. Maybe you have custody of that, of that uh, child. There's and no fear. But um, thank you for joining me today. You are so welcome, and, and thank uh, you so much for covering my two favorite topics. No problem. And this is Eric Catherine from Making Happen. Thank you.